Have a good day, my dear students. I'd like to present to you my new series of uh, orthopedic lectures in English. The, my purpose in this series is to encourage you to, uh, to read more and more uh, English, uh, English medical language, and uh, to improve yourself in this field, to help you in the future to read more and more in, in uh, references and the books, international books. My first topic will be about orthopedic inf infections. Osteomyelitis and uh, septic arthritis. These, uh, these are the main topics. In general, uh, the infection is caused by germs. These bacteria or germs or microorganisms can reach the site of the infection by two ways. Either by direct spread, that is the, uh, by uh, uh, puncture, uh, wound, uh, 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 surgery, uh, open fracture, or by uh, bloodstream, via bloodstream. When we have a remote site of infection, uh, the, the, the germs or the bacteria can travel uh, through the uh, bloodstream to reach the infection sites. Bone infection. Bone inf inf infection is called osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis is the infection of bone and, and the marrow. Uh, bone, bone tissue cannot be infected unless we have some predisposing factors because it has a, a, a good def a defense mechanisms. So anything that can depress the, the, uh, the immunity of the, of the patient, of the person, uh, may predispose to a bone infection and vascular problems or neurological problems. So for example, malnutrition or, or diabetes mellitus or corticosteroid administration, immuno, immunodeficiency, immune deficiency as in HIV, for example, or uh, uh, the use of uh, immunosuppressive drugs. As well, vascular problems, venous or arterial and neurological problems. Bone infection is as uh, any infection in, uh, in the body can be manifested by uh, heat, local redness, and swelling, local swelling. The heat and the high, and the high temperature, general temperature. But what, which is uh, specific for bone infection is the loss of function. Because uh, when we have infection in the limb, in the bone, in the extremity, uh, the, there will be a problem or pain or disability to use this extremity easily. Um, the bone is different from the soft tissue in the way that it cannot distend. So it, it's, co it's composed or consists of a collection of rigid compartments. These rigid compartments cannot distend, cannot swell. As a result, when we have inflammatory process, because our a severe inflammatory process or response in the, in the organism, because of the infection, there will be accumulation or rapid accumulation of, uh, of fluids, inflammatory fluids. This will cause Instead of distension of the site of infection, this will cause increase, rapid increase in the pressure in the uh, bone tissue, which result in occlusion of the, uh, uh, of the blood supply of the vessels, and, and that cause bone death. In, uh, in adults, osteomyelitis usually is not hematogenous. Usually, uh, 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 osteomyelitis in adults is exogenous. That happens because of uh, the direct spread, because of, as we see here, in uh, the diabetic food, for example. But also, it may happen by, uh, by, uh, via blood spray, uh, bloodstream, and uh, uh, is called hematogenous osteomyelitis, and it's, uh, it locates uh, or it's located usually in the uh, thorac in the vertebral column, especially in the thoracolumbar region, and in the people or in patients who has immunodeficiency uh, problems or uh, depressed or suppressed immunity. Acute hematogenous osteomyelitis usually is a disease of children. The adult may be affected, but in, uh, um, in a lower percentage. 
the cause, usually the major mechanism is we have a trauma to the extremity that causes a small swelling or small hematoma formation and a simultaneous bacteremia because of the remote site of infection as, as in the tonsillitis or in bowel infection, for example. When we have this acute inflammatory reaction, we have a vascular congestion, we have exudation of fluids, excessive exudation of fluids, and infiltration with leukocytes. As we have said previously, the intraosseous pressure rises rapidly, that causes intense pain. So we have, when we have acute um, uh, acute uh, osteomyelitis, we have intense and severe pain in the limb and obstruction of the blood flow that causes uh, vas intravascular thrombosis and bone death as a consequence in the late uh, stages. After two or three days, we may have uh, pus formation that travels through Volkmann canals and, and uh, cause a subperiosteal abscess formation. When we, when we go on with infection without treatment, we may have uh, reaction in the periosteum and the formation of involucrum and the, the area of infection in acute uh, hematogenous osteomyelitis becomes porotic because of the hyperemia because of the infection but when the infection in, um, uh, continues or persists for a long time for longer time or longer period we may have uh, some death of parts of the bone, which, which is called sequestra. And the, the presence or the formation of the sequestra and the presence of the sinuses uh, are the stigmata of uh, the development of chronic osteomyelitis, as we will see later. In children, the main site of infection, hematogenous osteomyelitis, is uh, at the, the metaphysial region. Why? It's the main site of infection uh, in, the, uh, in the children. Because the vascular supply, when they come and they reach the metaphysial region, they reflect, they twist back in a hairpin loop and before entering sinus, large uh, sinusoidal veins. In this area, we have a relative vascular stasis and we have a low oxygen tension and the fine vessel walls that facilitate uh, that the uh, the passage or uh, the passage of uh, bacteria um, to the neighboring tissue and especially to the hematoma site that is formed because of the trauma. This col bacterial colonization becomes evident in this hematoma site and cause the uh, the formation of the abscess. In this, uh, at this point, we should notice and we, sh we should verify two, two, uh, two age groups in children. The patients or the, the children younger than one year old, the vessels, as we see here, the, vi the vessels that uh, of the metaphysis travel through the epiphysis region and, go, uh, and um, give the blood, the blood supply to the epiphysis. So, when we have an infection in the metaphysical region in children younger than one year old, they usually have simultaneous uh, septic arthritis in this region. And the treatment of septic arthritis is different from treatment uh, of septic osteomyelitis. But in older children, as we see here, in older children, the blood supply of the epiphyseal region is different and it's separated from the vessels or the vascular supply to the metaphyseal region. So usually we do not have a simultaneous um, uh, infection or coexistent infection uh, of the septic arthritis with osteomyelitis. The, uh, the common sites of infection in children, as we have said, are the metaphysical regions, either upper humerus, upper femur, around the knee. Other, on the other hand, in uh, older patients, we may have foot, uh, at the foot, because of uh, um, uh, diabetic ulcer, or in diaphysis, and in vertebral column, as we have said, hematogenously. 
the bacteria that are uh, responsible for uh, causing osteomyelitis, uh, they differ from, from patient to patient. But in general, in general, we have uh, the main cause and the usual cause of infection is the Staphylococcus aureus, about 70% of cases. And, uh, at, the second, uh, at the second stage, or the, uh, the second most frequent um, or most common uh, bacteria is the beta hemolytic Streptococcus and Streptococcus pneumoniae. Now, we have some groups or some patients, some special patient, patients, who may be uh, susceptible to uh, special organisms. For example, in children between 1 and 4 years old, uh, uh, they may have a hemophilus influenza. And the children uh, with respiratory tract infection may have Kinjela kinga. Patients who suffer from sickle cell disease, they may have Salmonella typhi. And second, uh, the patients who have, uh, who are uh, intravenous ad uh, heroin addicted, or patient who who stays, uh, uh, the patients who stay in the intensive care unit for a long time with the prolonged um, intravenous administration, drug administration, they may have Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And the patient who has who are uh, immunodeficient patients, uh, they may have opportunistic um, diseases or infections as a fungal infection. These are the main causes, the main, the main bacteria, the main cases that, uh, that can cause the uh, osteomyelitis. But the, even this, uh, this bacteria may, may uh, change from time to time or from, from patient to patient. You may have issues, chocolate, proteus, uh, bacteroids, etc., etc. The clinical features, they are not very specific. They are the clinical features in children and in adults are the, are the, uh, the general signs of infections. And uh, a high fever, uh, which are characteristics for, um, and specific, uh, special, um, usually in uh, uh, older, pay, older children, they are not very, uh, the high temperature, they are not very common in, uh, in adults. We have fever, we have malaise, regional malaise, fatigue, uh, high temperature, high, uh, high pulse rate. But we, we should notice that in children who has uh, or, or in children who have simultaneous septic arthritis, we may have uh, some rigidity uh, and uh, like pseudo paralysis in the extremity because of the simultaneous or coexistent uh, septic arthritis in this area. Another remark, which is uh, the, the administration of um, uh, random antibiotics in, uh, without the prescription of the doctor, of the physician, may alter uh, the, the clinical signs and symptoms of the infection. So we may, uh, we may, uh, we may not be obvious, uh, we may not be able to differentiate um, this severe uh, state of infection. We should notice this because in our society we have a lot of children who, uh, or parents who give uh, uh, randomly their, um, uh, their children uh, some doses of antibiotics as uh, antalgics. Pay attention. Any fever, pain and refusal to be weighed, the loss of function as we have said, with uh, laboratory signs of infection as increased white blood cells, increased elevated ESR, elevated CRP, they are um, the stigmata or the characteristics of osteomyelitis in children. We should uh, diagnose or eliminate this, uh, this cause. Investigation in tools to, to diagnose uh, osteomyelitis vary uh, between radiological and laboratory uh, tests. Radiographically, 